Mathematical theory has long been a pillar for describing biological phenomena. For example, Gregor Mendel, considered the father of modern genetics, formulated the existence of alleles by observing that plant properties appeared to obey an implausible ratio of 3 to 1, decades before the discovery of actual chromosomes. In 1913, Michaelis and Menten hypothesized the existence of an enzyme substrate complex based on observing overall reaction rates and modeling alone, laying down the foundations for biochemistry as we know it. Interestingly, their results were accepted as fact for 30 years before the enzyme substrate complex was actually characterized. In 1952, Hushkin and Huxley were able to use overall voltage data from giant squid axons to quantitatively describe the ion transfers that were at the heart of initiation and propagation of action potentials. Their results received the Nobel Prize merely a decade later, attesting to their importance. Mathematics has been demonstrated to be a powerful tool for filling in gaps in our knowledge by hypothesizing the existence of certain constructs and providing a direction for biologists to develop more advanced experimental techniques. In 1893, the modern microscope was invented, allowing us to observe and measure characteristics of cells and microscopic organisms precisely, such as the warm C. elegans and the yeast cell Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So how do we actually start with a microscope image like this and extract information? In this example, we are looking at an image from a movie of individual yeast cells. Image analysis consists of three steps. We first identify the objects. Here, we can identify the boundary of cells with an algorithm we will discuss later. Next, we track where the objects are moving throughout the progress of a movie. Then, we collect relevant data. Here, we use our research to show examples of these three steps to extract important information, such as gene expression in yeast cells or the movement patterns of C. elegans. S. cerevisiae, more commonly known as budding yeast, is a wonderful organism to examine eukaryotic gene expression because of our ability to mutate certain control sequences known as a promoter region that controls gene expression, such as with this oscillating mutant we have shown here. This data can then be used to fuel models for predicting how certain mutations would influence how much a gene is expressed. But where does this data come from? Typical experiments last for about two hours and we take pictures every five minutes. Phase contrast imaging first allows us to identify individual cell boundaries. We can also use fluorescent reporter proteins such as CFP and YFP that glow whenever the promoter gets activated. This is how we measure how much the gene is being expressed. The more active the promoter is, the more the cell will glow. Finally, we use infrared fluorescent protein, known as IRFP, which we engineer to be in the nucleus. This will help us identify the center of cells. Once the data is collected, we employ our three steps of image analysis. The first question is trying to identify the boundary of each cell. We do this by fitting a lot of ellipses to each cell and seeing which one fits best. Then comes the task of tracking the cell. Unfortunately, because of technical and physical limitations, we cannot just take a full movie of the data. In the five minutes between each frame, these cells can move a lot. We assign cells so that the total change in distance, size, and shape of cells is minimized during the entire movie. Finally, we can then track the cell and measure the amount of fluorescent protein inside over time. Now, let's talk about the warm C. elegans. C. elegans usually moves in a sine wave pattern as shown above. However, mutations in certain gene regulatory networks can cause uncoordinated behavior, causing the worms to coil, twitch, or not move at all. We need a way to quantify this motion. We first convert the image into a binary matrix such that each pixel is either part of a worm, white, or part of the background, black. We then mark the center of each worm, as shown in this visualization, where each colored box represents a worm in a frame. With these clusters identified, we then use linear algebra to draw a best fit line through our movies connecting each worm. Not only does this help us figure out which worm is which, but also it helps us identify which are actually moving worms, since we are looking for elements that contribute change from frame to frame. Finally, we try to identify how quickly the worms are moving. For example, take an example of this same worm which finishes one sign period after 19 frames. In order to quantify how long each period takes, we create something known as a covariance matrix. The covariance matrix tells us how similar each frame is to each other. 
Here's how we read it. The X and Y axis tell us which frames are being compared, and the color of each individual pixel tells us how similar they are. The distance between these bright lines tell us the amount of time between when the worm reaches the same position, telling us how fast it is moving. Computational image analysis is a powerful tool that allows us to collect, reveal, and analyze important biological data, such as gene expression in the yeast cells or the movement patterns of C. elegans. Image analysis makes sure that we get the data we need for high-quality mathematical models.